Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 50 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to give an update on the moving bed filter, specifically how I've addressed the lack of aeration, which has been a problem in actually getting enough of the moving bed, well, moving. I've kind of reached the 300 subscribers mark, which, as I'm nearly at the end of my first year, means that the channel has about three times the number of subscribers I thought I'd have at this point. So I'm incredibly grateful for your support. YouTube is a strange world of amateur, semi-professional and professional video creation. And while I'm not really in it for monetization and fame, I can't pretend that I'm not delighted that so many people have signed up and watch my videos each week. I have an idea, like many YouTubers, to do some giveaways at some point to say thank you. I've no hard and fast plan, but 500 subs seems like a good point. If, of course, I ever reach it. More details to follow, nearer the time. The pond and fish are doing okay. The carp continue to not quite be in perfect health though, and I'm on to another treatment. As a nurse, I'd say they're thriving in spite of their health issues. They're really active, no flashing or jumping, no clamped fins, eating really well, and appear as confident as they have ever been. I think like many YouTubers, this year has proven tricky in terms of treating health issues and finally getting our fish symptom free. I'm not overly worried as they appear strong and healthy and it's more annoying that I can't get things back to how they were and finally relax that all is well. I plan to do a video detailing what's happened and all the things I've done. It will come either when I'm out of ideas and need a bit of help or when I've got on top of things and the fish are fine so that I can give the complete story of their health problems from beginning to end in one video. With luck, this will be next week, but that will obviously depend on how treatment goes. I'm currently also working on episode 52, which will be the annual review of both my pond and channel, detailing the good and bad things, what I think about being a YouTuber, how it's impacted my pond and what I plan for the second year. Episode 53, therefore, will be the first of year two of the channel, and there'll be a couple of little changes, because why not? Right, let's get started. Through February and March, I built my own moving bed to add some more biological filtration to the system. There's a series of videos and a complete compilation video, so check them out if you've not yet seen what I created, or more accurately, bodged together. Although it's not the best DIY filter ever made, my water tests, in spite of increased feeding, etc., have been consistently really positive, so it's doing a job. Although it was basically finished once plumbed in, there were a couple of teething issues. Firstly, media blocked the single outlet pipe, causing the system to overflow. I therefore added a barrier which made a block across the tub. It wasn't 100% effective and media found its way out and underneath the bottom grid. I therefore made a large mesh container which, while ugly and a little preventative of free movement of the media, had solved the problem. The next, and so far unsolved issue, has been with the aeration of the media. As you can see here, and even considering in this clip that the media hadn't yet matured, there's little movement, which is somewhat a prerequisite of a moving bed. Although I pretty much knew it was my underpowered air pump, I had a go at, again, bodging something together to make the most of the air that was produced. They both involve pipes forming a ring with holes to release air across as much of the moving bed as possible. The problem with both was that the pump just didn't have the power to get enough or indeed any air right around the ring and the air that was produced wasn't enough to move the media much. 
The next plan was to add another air disc into the moving bed and split the air. And although this improved things about 10% or so, it was still not really functioning as well as a moving bed needs to. So a new pump was the only answer. Unfortunately, Father's Day arrived at the right time. I chose a J-Cod air pump as they have a good reputation, seem quite quiet and a pretty good value for money. I got the 80 litre version, which I felt should be a big improvement on my current 35 litre pump. The connections that came with it allowed for a variety of options and certainly met my needs anyway, in that the screw in copper attachment would accommodate the hose pipe I've been using. Unpacking it all looked good. The build quality seemed, to my eyes anyway, pretty high. The only downside was the moulded plug, but that's a tiny issue. So, on to installing it. I'd got one connection left in my switch box, so I thought about using the socket instead, but I've no option but to use that for the CCTV camera, and I didn't really want to lose that. Adding new items to the switch box can be a little tricky, and I've seen on other YouTubers' videos that they've added sockets from the switch box instead, which makes changing and adding items so much easier. I'm not planning on any more changes, but that may be an option I think about if I do so in the future. One aspect that's tricky with my switch box is getting the front, where all the connections are, out from the rest of the case and into a position where I can see what I'm doing. This may be something that only I find difficult, but after a lot of threading of cables it was finally sorted. The other problem I have in working on the switch box is room, as it's difficult to reach comfortably as the moving bed and multi-bay are so close together. You'll therefore see me at one point put the lid on the multi-bay and lie down on it to get closer. That means I had to use my left hand, but it's all good really. If you wonder why the towel's there, it's a slightly optimistic attempt to have something to catch anything I might drop, as that would be a nightmare scenario if I did, as getting anything back would be nigh on impossible. Anyway, all done, case back on, and I then went to turn the electrics back on in the house, and I could then test the pump. Thankfully, the pump worked when I turned it on, and if sound alone was anything to go by, everything seemed promising. Taking the lid off revealed that there was a massive improvement, maybe even a bit too much agitation, a boil rather than a simmer. At this stage, I've not moved the discs around to get the best coverage, but the vast majority of the media is moving, so that's a win just some tweaking needed to get it perfect. Here I've staggered the air discs, which has improved things a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, the mesh container that the media sits in doesn't lend itself to perfect movement, 
so still more tweaking needed. Next, I do a quick test of boiling the media in the static beds with the moving bed still running. As you may have seen with the old air pump, I needed to turn off the air to the moving bed to be able to aerate the static beds for cleaning. Although I swapped between the beds here, I could probably boil the first static chamber while still running the other two, which means I could boil both static ones at the same time when cleaning, which would be helpful. Test done and I'm pretty happy. I probably need to reduce the flow to the moving bed and I've some ideas of how to do that, but that will be in a future episode. As for the old air pump, well, I'm going to try it out of an air disc in the pond, which is why I've left it connected to the switch box. If it's not powerful enough, I may use some of the air from the new pump to help it along. I'd probably position the disc in the rear right corner near the inlets. We'll see, and as I said, I'll update in future episodes. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. The next episode will either be about the carp's health or a topic I've not yet thought of. Safe to say there will be an episode and I'd be really grateful if you clicked on the thumbnail and took a look again. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.